money? Uh, yes. I believe that the blue box kit is the key to advancing the hobby. Let's see up, find out if there's truth to this. So okay. we can swing this either way we want. Okay. This is our political opportunity. All right, have guys, a... have me a table shot for this. White shot, ready? <coughs> and you <coughs> they believe. Because look, you know what? We may not even want to say that just for the fact we don't want to diss. Well, no, I, I'm not going to diss him, but I, I would What's say. What's today's date? I've heard today that some. Is Saturday, I would just say some people think. 12th. That. You know, all right, Mike. This, okay, all right, August I got 12th. it. You want me to ask that yeah, part? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, I'm okay. Start you ask this. him, and then I'll ask him. You could ask him about. Okay, it. quiet on set, please. The computer part of it. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. This is the What's Neat podcast for August 12th, 2017. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Model Railroad Show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine every month. And this is the What's Neat This Week weekly podcast that we do to update everybody in the hobby as to what's going on. Plus, we've got some subjects that we want to talk about tonight. Chris Palomares, unfortunately, can't be with us this evening, so we're going to wing this one by ourselves. But Chris did give us a list of questions to ask, so I think we're going to kind of go on with this. Tonight, I've got Thomas Heal with me. I've got Daniel Coombs, Dave Davis, Mike Buddy, and of course, myself. And Dirk is running cameras for us tonight. Thank you very much. First thing we want to kind of talk about a little bit is because we've got Dave with us, and Dave was in the hobby years ago, working with the Midwest Valley Modelers and also doing his own home layouts. And he's kind of been out of it for almost six years, and we kind of want to get a feel for what kind of culture shock have you experienced since you've gotten back into the hobby? Is it night and day? What's what's What have you found difficult? What's easy? What's the surprises? Well, I, I have to say the electronics are... are it's it's unbelievable. It's so it's so much simpler, you know. It's something we're going to touch on here with with Daniel here, you know, mm -hmm. with the computer and, and running things, and it's just I don't know. When I about six years, six seven years ago, when I had to you know focus on making a living, the uh, scenery was just blowing up. It was it was amazing. All the stuff, and now you you know the fake fur is still great stuff. You got us started on sill floor and the sill floor, yeah, and the the tufts. Uh, but the the trees, the trees that you can get, mm -hmm. and the, the 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 foliage and things. Now I did a little something different with the leaves. Is I put them in a screen to make them scale out about three inches wide. And, yeah, you know, a, a, with that to you know do that, and that's where I was getting my brown leaves from. Right. And and Woodland Scenics had you know the different different types to get the you know the off yellow, mm -hmm. the off orange, and not make everything too kick. Right. You know, because everything turns at a little different time. Right. But I'll tell you, uh, between the rolling stock, uh, it was gut wrenching because every time I'd pick up a magazine and see an ad with Exact Rail and and all these grain cars coming out, everything we were buying decals for, <laughs> it's useless. Right. They're making it. Yep. It's out. They're different numbers. Uh, look at what Athens put now. Uh, different, all the engines, and now I don't have to spend time super detailing an engine. But it's done, right? Right. And it runs silky smooth, and it, it, oh, if it doesn't have sound in it, it's pretty easy to put sound in it now. Do you see yourself getting involved with DCC more this time around? It's going to have to be now. And you've gone from Z scale to HO. Well, what happened was I, I was, you know, I'm still limited on some space. So I wanted to model miles. Miles. So I looked at T400, and they had, uh, you know, covered wagons and some Jeeps and some American cars and things. So I thought, okay, five feet for a mile? Okay, that's doable. I'm getting a little closer to my aerial photographs and being actually to model the six-mile stretch I wanted to. What and scale is that, it's, actually? Well, T, it's 1 to 400. Wow. So that's really tiny. And mm -hmm. scales one one sixty and uh, well, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to run hundred car trains. How am I going to do that without right. having mid helpers hitting them box yeah. cars? And so I, I I looked at Z scale and I said, okay, you know what? I can deal with the twenty four feet. Four of those is four miles. Mm -hmm. So okay, then I started buying the stuff and and of course the, the switches out of the box. You know, they were a little tough. Right, reliability. And so then I went ahead and bought the, uh, the, switch, the switch kit where you make your own yeah. switches and uh, taking out the, uh, the high iron on the, on the flex track and putting the Code 40 in it, and it was starting to shape up. And I thought, okay. Then I started buying rolling stock. And ALZ had a silky smooth engine. Handrail's a little thick, no big deal. It pulled 20 cars. It's got lower bands on the wheels. 
and then the micro trains, I, I couldn't get everything to run together. And I need things to run together. And I'm going to need every bit of that SD40-2 and the, the second one and the B unit helper for that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they just weren't running together, and I was getting frustrated, so I kind of put it on the side after spending about eight $900. You know, so, so then, so what say, was the trigger to get you back into HO? Coming here after the last prototype meeting. Right, the RPM show. Over on the chopping block. the 187 stuff, the yeah. Proto 87 store guy. Oh, man, that Him. stuff is... A it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. amazing. It, oh, it yeah. turned me right there. Seeing the switch with the self-guarded frog, seeing all the details on the switch, you know, he didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only thing missing is the linkage rod between the points. Yeah, maybe that's something I'm going to develop and, and put out, come out with a part for it that they can come out with. That's the only thing on that switch that gives it away in a photo, is that rod that goes to that connection. Yeah. So... But the self-guarded frog he came out with, it was there, and it's silky smooth. And then he touches something right on the board there, and the switch machine moves <laughs> automatically. Uh, the target he's moves. He's coming out here in October, right around Naperville. They're coming out here, and we're going to demo demo that switch product. Now, Thomas, you're getting ready to lay a lot of track. You said something the other week. You're going to need 800 feet of track. <laughs> what do you tell us? What you're working on? I saw your metal uh, bench work. You're building something. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we got a. Uh, me and my friend uh, Brad George, are, uh, we had a simple little layout we started maybe, he started probably about five, five six years ago. Um, we moved it from his dad's house to his mom's house there. And, uh, you know, we had some fun like that. We got a signal system up and going, got a simple, you know, ABS block system. And say so once we got the signals into her, we started, that's when things really started t <laughs> kicking off with that. We're like, oh man, that's just so cool. So we're like, well now shoot, now we need an extension so we can have more signals go down here, go to a little town over there. And then you know, I brought him over here, here maybe about two months ago. And he got to look at you know, your whole layout down around here, running around the perimeter. And he's like, why in the world don't I have something like this? And he's like, cut it. <laughs> and that's All so gone. handy to have that circle, yeah. even if you're oh, not going to use it, it that way, to run and break things in. And this is probably the reason why Kenny doesn't point to point. Yeah, he needs yeah. time to break I things run, in. Uh, it's a racetrack. It just run. Right. Well, but there's it, more it people. It can be, but you can operate this like it's point to point. Especially yeah, the narrow gauge. It's very operationally laid out, which I mm -hmm. like. But it's amazing how many people I've heard that they've seen the Midwest Valley layout or they've come to a person's home layout. And after seeing the layout, they go home and tear down theirs. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Seen that. I've seen I that. Say, it, 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 it's nuts. I came here and I just there's so many ideas and things I picked up. You, I mean, I've seen. Uh, you know, I'd start getting getting back into this hobby. I seen a couple of your videos on the what's neat thing, and I was like, wow, that is like super cool. And I just started thinking about this. I'm like, well, shoot, that wouldn't be that hard to implement some in our house. So you know, I've got we went metal framework, bench work got magnets so we're going to you know if we got the two layers of foam we're going to use the magnets to hold it all down in place and now comes the real fun stuff is getting all the wiring because i want to try to make it modular as possible with all like click plugs and stuff like that i haven't quite figured out what kind of connectors and plugs i want to go with um you know i'll keep everybody up to date on that because you know we don't have any intentions of moving this at any time soon, yeah, but, but just just having the ability to disconnect definitely. it, definitely, without or destroying or, or, yeah, even like any of the stuff here, just being able to unplug it and take it off and do scenery. You know, right. taking it off the wall right. and just set it down in the middle and doing that. It just now you, it's so now, easy. Excuse me here just a second, but that's really kind of the last thing that uh, you know. I was talking to Chris uh, earlier this week, and he was talking about the module he wants to make, and he really doesn't want to get bogged down with with doing bench work. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a way with, uh, you know, because we want to run with Fremo that, you know, we can do pretty much whatever you want to do. Keep the code 83 on the main line, the same yep. main line. But as far as making your own module thing, uh, you really don't have to do that. There's tables you can buy and you can keep that stuff propped up to get it up to the 50 inches. Make mm -hmm. your converter modules on the end and just simply do what Ken's done here. Right. It's so over. It's, it's, right. it's over. Rolling. And, you know, you're going to make long modules like that. Oh, it's not going to bend. I'm, I was asking him about that. And he goes, no, by the time you put the fascia on here and you glue that all in, you seal everything, it's going to be. And then now when you go to a train show, you're not, while these guys have been setting up for four hours, you get there after 45 minutes and you're done. Yeah. Now you're running, you're running stuff. And you'll never have to know the pain of tearing up a layout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, us older guys have had to maybe tear you, up. Maybe you don't want to do bench work. Yeah. Maybe that's what's keeping you from it. 
if from making the module. Mm-hmm. I know I'm putting off $100 in lumber, right. and I've been putting it off for three weeks. And then Chris talks to me about that the other night, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm glad Sound I put that idea. off. Yeah. Because here's the thing. It's been right in front of our face. Well, our faces for since yeah. you've been doing it. Yeah. And it's true. It's tested. The stuff goes outside. It comes back in. It's it's baking. It's freezing. It's coming back in, and it all stays together. So that's that's proof positive for me. Mm-hmm. So that's really the last the last thing I need to say about you know getting well, back in the hobby. Now that stuff is more possible, faster. Oh yeah, lighter, it's so much easier and true tested. Yeah, right. And it's and the price point Portable. on the metal studs and everything has come down. I mean, you're, you're talking just like uh, from like a two by four, eight feet long. There's like maybe twenty cents difference between that and a, yeah. a thing and it's like well shoot why wouldn't i right and now with the magnets ken's magnet idea and burying the wires oh, right. in the foam and all these things i mean there's a lot of what's neat this week stuff we could talk about here tonight but oh we'll, yeah there's there's so much talking about what's neat this week october you helped thomas with the dcs 240 update and that is something i actually want to say because i did review the dcs 240 that's a wonderful command station from digitrax and we had it on which show daniel did i have that install on uh you had it february 2017 february oh 2017 <laughs> what's neat computer. <laughs> you can see the DCS 240 installation from Digitrax, which is an absolutely wonderful system. So far, two thumbs up. I love it. But it did have just a little bit of a quirk in it, whereas we couldn't get, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the truth here, we couldn't get uh, CVs 11, 12, and I think 10 to work correctly when we were trying to do You're a soundtrack video. There. Something, I don't know what was, so I called Digitrax Monday after we were doing that shoot, and they said, oh, there's a patch on our website which updates your system similarly to that of Microsoft up updating your computer program. And so for the October show, Thomas shows how to update not only the system for the DCS 240, but also the handheld throttles, which is absolutely an amazing segment coming up. Just out. about anything that goes on their loco net seems like they'll, they have an update, a firmware update or something like that on there because, I mean, I didn't go thoroughly through our website, but, you know, I pulled up, I looked at your DT402 uh, throttle, it's, it, had the latest, it had some firmware updates while we were looking at DCS, you're like, well, shoot, why not? Sure. You got it there, plug it in, I mean, it's a, it's, it's super simple. No, not to like. I, I can I can see I can see you know a computer can be a little bit off putting to some people at times, and I totally understand that. But I mean, it. <laughs> there's not much you can really mess up. This is our. This is why you are a computer <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, you know, you, we just saw you take apart Dirk's laptop shop and ask these questions. You know, you pull yeah. apart computers like we'll pull apart. Oh yeah, say, 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 yeah, say, yeah, say yeah, no, there's a, say yes, and most and there's a fair amount of people that just aren't. They're very timid about it because they don't want to fry it or something like that. I mean, that you can make a, Understandable. a, yeah, a fair comparison yeah. of people of older people sticking with a, a DC system versus DCC. They think it's it's and, and, you well. Know, look at I, Bob I, Rivard with over a hundred engines. Mike, you want to you want to talk about DCC because you're you're still into DC, right? And you yeah. are a firm believer in it. Well, there's nothing there's nothing wrong I with just, it. It's just too hard for me to understand all the DCC functions, and uh, I I just. I just like watching my trains run around the room. I like building models, but weathering look, models. With, with and Bob Rivard, them he actually around, took and know? he spent some time, and he yeah, was he timid. Did. He was. He said, "You know what? No, I'm not gonna. I can have too many engines." And finally, he went over the. He went over he the hump. He he wanted sound, and Bob Rivard. Yeah, I mean, here's a guy that's. Is, He's he's faced a hundred engines. He's coming up and decided September's to go ahead and neat. start doing it, and he did it. And it yeah. took a while, and he still may be doing a few of them. But you know, he wanted sound, and he wanted the other the extra control. So I mean, it's, just I know all of some those people really have turn. to take the plunge. I You've mean, got some nice engines like with the, sound yes, in them yeah, already. I know I've got like four or five. Now, Daniel, engines. not to let you off the hook tonight, but <laughs> yeah. tell us what size layout is it you're working on? You've been working on a layout for a good three years now. Um, I'd say it's only a five by ten. Five by layout, ten. but it was basically two five by five uh, squares. You're gonna, that my you're gonna let us bring what's neat in your basement and film your layout. Uh, you know what? That probably I would a good like idea. to do a segment That's on your layout. A good idea, and it's just you know your simple oval of I got well I now I got Alice Cody A3 track. I originally had micro engineering, but that didn't go too well because I didn't know what I was really doing. Yeah, I have to say I did a rookie th- mistake and just went over to micro engineering, got a b- whole bunch of track with their. I don't know, three foot, six piece sections, and then yeah, the well, switches. Keep it, because keep it, you'll be able to work with it. Well, right. And it's then I little, have. It's just everything's a little tighter. Right. You know, the regular flex track will go right over, and there you got to bend and bend and do things. Yeah. And well, and then 
the layout is basically, again, just a simple oval with the siding, and then I got a five-track yard and a two-bay engine facility. It's something small, and I've also got Digitrax DCC into the system because when we moved to my new house back in 2011, I originally had a four, your starter 4x8 four sheet of plywood, Bach Easy track, you know, control panel in one location with the search light here, and then here's the street lights, make a night scene. Can I um, ask you a question? Yeah. Is, is, do you have a rail fanning site here in St. Louis somewhere, your favorite place to go watch things, or do you I don't get don't, to do that? Well, I don't really do that a lot. You but don't. whenever I'm just around and I see trains, it's like, oh, that's my kind of rail fanning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just if the I reason see, I'm asking is maybe instead of, you know, use that oval layout as a, as a test layout like this, but maybe uh, start to do a Fremo scene and, and model oh, your favorite spot. Yeah, build your own modules, yeah. Do you find Did, yourself building kits like blue box kits? Yeah, that's or? something I wanted to ask. Um, I noticed most of the, your trains, when you brought a train over, most of your train cars were pretty nice ones with separate grab irons and well, metal wheels. You know, what about the cheap stuff? I don't really care Not about cheap, it. Not inexpensive. Well, I don't know what you're trying to say, <laughs> but uh, I don't really get much into building the kits because I just want it ready-made because, again, I don't really know all the details on, let's say, a 50-foot plug door box car. Mm-hmm. I got one example for At- from Atlas, and they super deal to that thing. I mean, oh, my gosh. Every little rivet, every little right. you know sidebar, every little detail is on there from and, the prototype. And a lot of them are yep. uh, road specific too. Yes. I mean it's amazing yeah. how they how That's what so, that's what was so hard over so these So you would last rather pay f- pay extra for that than yeah, I mean how do you afford all those cars as a youngster? You know, uh, I, I know well, money was tight when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> it was. I, I have to that. say I kind of mow lawns every week, you know, 25 bucks a yeah, lawn. Yeah, well, there you so, go. So I, I save up money, but then I got that Christmas money or that birthday. That's a tangent car, right? Yeah, right. With, you mow two lawns, that's a tangent car right there. You got a tangent car, car right yeah, right there. Oh, you still got to pay taxes good. on it. You need to mow a third. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, <laughs> but it's also with the Christmas and birthday allowances yeah. or the trip up to Mark Twain Hobby Center, which is here in our area, mm-hmm. that I had uh, gone up there the past three Christmases because I just they had a lot of selection I thought well, they why do not? they really yeah. do that has turned out to be our best shop in town right it? yeah after the other ones faded away yeah they, they stuck strong well but they have a lot of high-end stuff that the other oh shops my gosh I went okay I, real quick I went in there a couple I think it was just last week after a thing in St. Peter's my dad just drove me up there and we walked around Atherton locomotives three yeah. of their I don't know how tall their display cases are but they had so many Athern locomotives, and half of their ready-to-roll stuff with the older box design, because now I've seen they got the newer boxes mm-hmm. with the new uh, SD40-2s they came out with the, with the Ekonomi sound. Um, they literally had sales on those engines. And to think all the Genesis stuff, they had one shelf just full of nothing but Genesis. Yes, it's something. It is and like figures and uh, yeah. vehicles and the Digitrax DCC. They have cars, and vehicles, yeah. five different brands of Roller cars. Stock and it's amazing. It it's really amazing. is. Actually, it reminds me of the checkered flag days. Oh yes. yeah, back when they stocked a lot of mm. stuff. Well, I tell you, you guys want to run some trains tonight? Yeah, because okay. it's Saturday night. This might be a good place to almost cut this off. I don't know how long we've gone, but you see a lot of turbines in front of me here. And we've got a RDC from uh, Rapido. Rapido, which is a really nice model Jason sent us. Yes, I'm going to do a is. nighttime shot with that because the lights on that are spectacular. Really? We've got a locomotive at Intermountain sent us. This is a uh, GP10. GP10. Yeah. The Duca Rebuild. Illinois Central, Duke something Duke. nice. Oh, and this that, little man. N-scale model here is also a Intermountain. And, and they, somehow they shoehorn sound into that. So I can't wait to put that on a track because people say we don't have enough end scale on the show. Well, we've got a little bit to get started here with. These turbines are here because Soundtracks has announced at the NMRE National last week a brand new turbine sound system in their Tsunami 2 line, which I'm looking forward to doing the installation in these two units, a slab and a veranda turbine. Each evidently sounded just a little bit different. But the fact is, it times just right with the turbine segment that I'm planning for the November What's Neat show, where we're also going to have Shane Wilson's beautiful ScaleTrains.com turbine. 
magnificent model. So this is going to be turbine month coming up in November. That's why these models are. And incidentally, this is going to get painted with that new true scale paint. I'm looking forward to testing out that paint. So we're going to use that on the show and see how that turns out. To weather it or? To repaint that. It's more of an orangish tone than it yeah. should be. Well, the so, true scale is mm. on, Scale Trains uses it on all their new SD40-2s that they've recently come out with. It's evidently pretty nice paint. I can't wait to get into it. Hmm. It is. It's like spot on to the prototype. So our well, GoFundMe account for the show is doing very well. We're almost up to $2,000. Thank you so much for all the folks that have made contributions to that. Our purpose behind that is to improve the quality of the What's Neat This Week podcast and the What's Neat show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And in addition to give us just a little bit more of a travel budget to move around the country and interview folks. But it's all about the health of the hobby. And when I say that, it's the health of the hobby through education, through the videos and the information that we can give to show, hey, look how easy and wonderful this hobby can be. And that's kind of the purpose behind that. And, and thank you very much for helping us with that. The Fine Arts America website, we sold some coffee cups this week. Somebody sent me a picture on Facebook of these gorgeous mugs with photographs of the models on them. Really cool. Check that out. That's the fineartamerica.com website. And otherwise, be sure to check out what's neat here for the month of September. The Railroad Prototype Modelers Meet will be featured in that show due in just about 15 more days, I think, when Joe Fugate releases that. And incidentally, Bob Brevard's in that video, Dave. So he yes, did a really I good piece. Yes, I saw that, and I'll tell you what. That's, yeah, it's uh, good to see the, him. It, well, yeah, he he really hated to to not be here after that because they had a long drive. Yeah, but he really wanted to uh, to operate. And when I saw he had that G scale engine operating with yeah. no track, I was yeah. sitting around the table it was running. Amazing. That's in the video. Ran on the table. Yeah, that's in the still photos too. Yeah. Go figure. But I wrote about that specifically. And that's probably that's coming to HO. The better batteries get. So yeah. I mean, we're getting yeah, there's technology. a lot. Just progressing things. there. So with What's that, that, I guess we're going to just about yes. close this out. Make sure that you ask questions on the YouTube site. Any questions you have, we like to answer them. We didn't really get to or too topics, many of the, or right? topics or modeling yeah. discussions that you'd like to see on the show or subject matter for the What's Neat show. Be feel free to talk about that too. So Ken Patterson, Dave Davis, Mike Buddy. Daniel, Daniel Coombs, Coombs Thomas Tom Heal, Heil. and Dirk, thank you very much for running the camera this evening. Tom Heil. So, Thomas, guys, <laughs> have a great night. This is the What's Neat This Week podcast. All right. For these just aren't long enough. You know, yeah. they really aren't. There's man. so many things that we could I know, man. I keep about. thinking, how can we fill up that much time? And <laughs>